AMD says you're overheating GPUs. Ah, they're fine. The FTC says MasterCard, stop doing what you're doing. And the, the non-X AMD CPUs are coming. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is a continuation of some details that we've been talking about for the past week or so. And that is AMD's GPUs being overheating little messes. Which, where's mine? Where did I put my 7900 XDX? Aha, got my prop. So these bad boys are not necessarily living up to all of their potential because of some overheating issues that they're having not on the GPU die, but rather on the hotspot temperatures. And we talked about how AMD is aware of this and they might be trying to fix it, but it turns out that if you try to return your card for overheating and what would some people would call thermal throttle, uh, they decline that. This is coming out of a Reddit report where one user was talking about their GPU GPU hitting 110 degrees Celsius on their hotspot temperatures, even providing proof in the post showing off, yes, it's hitting 110 while playing Call of Duty. And when they tried to return it to AMD, they said, thank you for your email. The temperatures are normal. If you there is any issue, please contact us back. Thank you for contacting AMD. So not the greatest reply in the world and does seem to indicate that AMD is thinking that all of this is within spec. There are some other people who have reported that they have been trying to return their GPUs for the overheating and AMD is saying, hey, you can do that so long as you actually haven't opened the thing yet. So it looks like AMD is accepting RMAs for their GPUs as long as you haven't used them and not for any sort of overheating issue. And this has led to specifically with that Reddit post, a lot of people are like, hey, we figured out the fix already. So if you've been able to pick up one of these GPUs, allegedly, this is how you fix it. If you mount it like this, you're gonna get bad contact pressure, which is causing the hot spots to actually go really hot. But if you mount it like this, well, then everything's fine, and somehow that pressure differentiation makes it so that the GPU actually cools down. So vertical mount, good. Horizontal mount, bad. That's essentially what it boils down to. So this is also being reported on by Hardware Lux, who has done some research to find out which GPUs are being affected, and it turns out it really is just the made by AMD GPUs, and it's not the cooler, which is something that Der Bauer came out and found out. It is the contact pressure, and so there's a couple of ways to mitigate this, but the simplest one in case you don't want to open up your GPU and try to reapply a few things is to vertically mount your graphics card, which not everybody's going to have the possibility of doing. But if you're spending $1,000 on a GPU, likely you have a high end of high end enough of a case in order to vertically mount it. So it's a it's a half baked solution. Honestly, AMD should fix this. We should start to see AMD respond to this in the next couple of days or so, maybe in the new year. This is going to be an issue. This is going to be reported on by a lot of the tech media, AMD's hotspot temperatures are not within spec. The 110 degrees Celsius is causing down clocking of the GPU clocks and GPUs that don't use their cooler are getting full performance, whereas these ones are being limited. So it is a problem, even if AMD is not going to accept an RMA on it. But let me know if you bought a thousand dollar GPU and it overheated and all you needed to do was vertically mount it, would you be upset? want to hear from you down below in the comments while you hear about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by the simplest desk monitor mount I have used in my entire life. It's the Huanwo HNDS6. And this is a dual monitor mount that I set up in less than five minutes and I got Kyler on a dual monitor mount in no time flat because it is so easy to put together. All you have to do is attach the monitor bracket to the monitor, attach the monitor stand to the desk and attach the monitor to the monitor stand. It is so simple. It also has a unique and innovative swift lock that makes setup a breeze. So it's very easy to attach it to the back of the desk and removes the worst part of installing a monitor mount that I, I constantly have to deal with. You put it on the back and then you have to like tighten it back here while you're reaching around the monitor no longer. And that's because of the one piece gas spring monitor arm that simplifies the assembly, the tool is set up. You just have to screw in a few things, but you do it when it's not at the back of the desk. And then you get all the benefits of a great monitor mount. It's easy to adjust and make sure that your monitors are positioned where you want them to be. And it can improve your posture and be more comfortable for where you want to position them. And it's strong and durable and it's going to hold your monitors in place and make sure that they do not fall over. And it can fit tons of different monitors from 13 inches all the way 
up to 27 inches. And the best part for Kyler, because we gave him the modern amount arm, is that he gets to save space on his desk. No longer do you have to have it taken up by those stupid legs that take up way more space than they functionally need to, and you just, you get so much extra room for activities on your desk, but it's simple to set up. That's my favorite part. It is very versatile, and it's a great dual monitor mount solution in case you're looking for one. So I highly advise you check them out at the link in the video description. The HNDS6, I enjoy it very much. Kyler loves it too, isn't that right, buddy? Woohoo! Check them out down below. And you know what else you can mount? your mind to the crypto stocks. Bitcoin is up half a percent to be at 16.838. Not a lot of movement in that market. Ethereum up 1% to be at 12.16.98. And Dogecoin is down 0.00%. It's at seven and a half cents. It's great stuff. You know what else is great stuff? That peacock that Reese showed us yesterday. He's on a great vacation. Let's got for UFD deals today, buddy. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bring the hottest tech deals up on the internet. Vacationary is chiming in to let you know that yes, there are deals, and yes, you should head over to UFD.deals to check them out after the episode. Like always, we'll leave links down in the video description, and with that, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. I have an army of chickens at my disposal. And there's a homie chilling over there, just because. Thank you, Pally Boy. But if you're trying to buy all of these UFD deals with MasterCard, well, the FTC is coming after them because of some details on how they process tokenization and making it so it's difficult for other payment networks to actually utilize their network, which is actually resulting in higher fees and higher charges. So the FTC is now ordering them to start providing competing payment networks with the information that they need in order to process all of this. This is a really big deal when it comes to the tokenization technology that's behind things like Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, all of those mobile payment platforms, and it's leading to higher charges on those types of payments. And so the FTC is trying to step in because it seems to be only MasterCard who is doing this, which is making it difficult when there's Visa transactions that are going on. Visa doesn't do this to MasterCard, but MasterCard does this to Visa, and so it's creating a problem. And the FTC wants it to stop. And Intel wants you to stop not using AV1 encoding and decoding. And now it's being reported by Intel's own drivers that AV1 encoding is coming to Meteor Lake, which is the next generation of CPUs that we're expecting from Intel. So it's being found out in the driver's butt. This was reported on multiple months ago by leaks indicating that yes, AV1 encoding is coming to the integrated GPU on the next generation of CPUs, which is a pretty big deal for anybody who wants to do content creation, get some of that hardware acceleration for AV1. We're finding this on all of the latest GPUs. Intel was the first bringing it out with their Arc Alchemist GPUs. Then Nvidia came out with it with the RTX 40 series and AMD has it on the RX 7900 series, but it does appear to be that AV1 videos are gonna be the wave of the future because they provide just as good video quality, if not better, at the same bit rate or using the same quality at much less bit rate. So it requires less data on the viewer side, less data on the server side, and just need the hardware support in order to encode it for video production, but then also decode it when it comes to the devices that you're watching it on, which likely you're gonna be fine with that because AV1 decode's been around for a little bit while longer than the encode. I'm not saying words correctly right now, but that's the whole thing. Anyways, there's also been some indication, which we'll talk about this more if there's any more details. Uh, Meteor Lake, the desktop chips allegedly have been canceled. That's according to one tweet from one Raichu who is a known leaker. There needs to be more data before I talk about this in depth, but it could be a problem or it could be nothing. We'll talk about that later, but you know what's not canceled? AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs with the non-X. They're coming out January 10th. Week slides coming out from AMD CES presentation indicating that, yeah, they're happening at the price point that you were expecting, 429, 329, 229, with a release date of January 10th, so just about a week after they announced them on January 4th, and also some slides of the benchmarks of the 7900 versus the 5900X, and it does appear like the 7900 does a lot better in video games between 7 and 48% faster than the previous Ryzen 9 X series chip that had the same amount of cores. Here you can see all of the comparisons, video cards providing a nice little chart for that. But the non-X series CPUs appear to be good. Price point seems to be fine. The motherboards are not being addressed. Hopefully AMD talks about this at CES. Cheaper B650s, a, a, what, it would be A620s. Can we get some of those? That would be great because that's, I think that's what's holding a lot of people back. RAM pricing has continued to de decrease, but motherboard pricing is still a spicy cucumber. And my cucumber's spiced enough, so I'm gonna, I shouldn't have said that. 
Hot news is over now. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends. Bye.